Okay, so once we have the um, once we have the cross over here, the next part is we just put in these corners over here. So we're just going to put in these corners. Obviously, this one is going to be the red triangle. Now, this correlates with this quite simply, and it's the same really as this. And it's all just positioning. So this corner is going to be the green, brown, and white. Green, brown, and white is right over here. And we just roll that in. I'm not going to give you any algorithms with this because this is Rubik's Cube style, so that's fine over here. Here's another green, green, yellow, and orange, which is right over here. I'm going to do this part fairly quickly, I hope. Green, white, and orange right over here. So you can see where that we're orienting all of these correctly and here. So we have all of our corners in. We're going to do the same thing here. <clears throat> the difference now is that while this had three colors in it, these just have one. So as I'm doing this, these are only going to have one color. Now you might think that that's going to make it easier, but in some ways it's going to set us up for potential placement issues. So let's look for the red triangle. Bear in mind, it's fun to kind of do comparisons with an actual super cube. The difference is that this is one color and not three, and this is rolled in in exactly the same way. Turn, 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 we're good over here. We need the yellow one, which is here. So we'll just move this out. And now we'll just move this in. Turn, turn, <clears throat> turn, so that's good. Now, how about this corner? Well, this is not going to be just a tri uh, just this one of these triangles. It's going to be the big one. And this is going to be a green, red, and white big corner. So let's find the green, red, and white, which is right over here. And this is rolled in the same way. So as you can see, there's really no difference between this and your 3x3 three three super cube, even though it's not a cube. And I'm just going to roll this in appropriately. So pretty easily, we're able to get... Our first side. So there's our first layer done, just like this first layer. Now the second layer in the super cube is no different than getting the second layer of Rubik's cube. It's the same algorithm. This is an edge only layer, so the orientation doesn't have any different meaning. Um, you should have the centers already oriented, so this algorithm is not going to change anything that you just did. So if you would recall what the algorithm is, if you wanted to move this white and red down to here, white and red. If you want to go from right to left side, then basically you do your UI, LI, U, L, U, F, UI, FI. Now I do that slowly because I can do it better than I can say it, but anyway, that puts that in there. Same algorithm, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Same thing here. Of course, I'll post these algorithms too. This goes from here to here. So on the right side, it's going to be U, R, U, I, R, I, U, F, I, um, U, F. If I said that wrong again, I'll, I'll post it. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting these edges in again, exactly the same way. This one has to be bounced out. And this comes over here. Same thing. And last but not least, this guy over here. Okay, so we have our second layer in. This, absolutely no difference. No difference whatsoever. The only difference, well, there's no difference. You just have to keep in mind orientation. So just bear in mind, this is your middle layer. Edge, edges only. Same algorithm. So what goes in between here? This is going to be a green one. You can see two colors, green and silver. Well, here's the green and silver over here, so this will be moved in from here down to here. Not like this, because green is on the bottom, silver is on the top. So move it over here, and this will move down to here, and this is going to be the left to right algorithm exactly the same. UI. Now, bear in mind your perspective, too. So this is a layer here. Um, this, is going to be, uh, this is going to be my F over here. So the one that I want to move down is going to be on the F side here. So F, R, and L. So bear that in mind. 
Just keep your perspective on where your centers are. Do it like a cube, even though it's not shaped like a cube. That's the challenge of these mods. So this will be a, this is gonna be my U move over here. So we have UI, this is gonna be my L, I move over here. So UI, LI, U, L, U, F, UI, FI. Same algorithm, and look what it did. Deposited that right in here. So let's see what else needs to come in here. I see a yellow and yellow solid color, so it's going to be this one. Well, obviously it doesn't go with a large end down because you can see that doesn't fit. So I'm going to move this over here, knowing that this is going to slide down in this perspective. You can actually look and see what that's going to look like. Perfect. So this is the left side. Again, let's orient ourselves. Let's we'll call this F. Just remember where your centers are so you don't get lost. Center, so this is F. This, this is my up over here. So now this is going to come down here. So U, R, U, I, R, I, U, F, I, U, I, and F. And it put that in here. Now we do exactly the same thing. Red and blue. Find it up here. Can't, because it's over here. So I need the solid white, which is right here. Where does this move? Well, you can see this is this is the shape outlined here. So this long bottom comes down to here. So I'm going to move it over here, where this will be my F over here. This is going to be my F side right over here. And do the same algorithm. Sometimes moving can be a little challenging, because these are sharp edges here. Turn. Turn, 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 and turn. So that's in, which bounced this one out. And there it is over here. This needs to, whoop, nope, sorry, that's not it. This is it. Red on the bottom, so this shifts down here. So my F is going to be this center in front of me over here as this shifts down over here. So same algorithm. Turn, turn, and turn. Okay, so what we have is we have both layers and we have just the top layer um, ready. So if we were to look at the correlation between the supercube here, we've got the top layer. Here's how I approach the top layer of a supercube. First off, do the same thing that you did with the 3x3. Three three. You have to rotate the edges. You have to rotate the edges to where all the blues are on top. So this algorithm, um, again, we talk about the line or the L. I assume you know what that means. If not, let me know. But anyway, the algorithm is uh, we see the line over here. So we hold that in front of us and do an F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. And that bounces all these up over here. So that's the first challenge is rotating them up. Let's come over here and see what that means. How do I know which one is rotated? How do I know that it's rotated up? when it's not just a supercube, it's a shape mod. Well, when we say rotated, is this like this, or does this have to be flipped? Does this have to be flipped? How the heck can we figure that out? Well, there's an easy way to do that, and that's take your corners here, or take your edges here, and put it where it's supposed to be and see if it lines up. So this is supposed to be here, and you can see it's flipped. So I know that this is upside down. What about this over here? Well, let's put this in to the edge where it's supposed to be, and you can see this is right side up. So I know, I know this is upside down, this is right side up. What about these guys? Exactly the same thing. Let's put this where it's supposed to be, which is here. I know this is right side up. So now I know this is right side up, this is right side up. There is no parity with this. So if this is right side up and this is right side up, this is upside down, this has to be upside down. It has no choice. You want to prove it? Sure. Move it over here and see that it's upside down. So basically, we have a line, and that line is this and this. If this were right side up and this were right side up, it would be like the L. So this is our line, so we do exactly the same thing. Hold it here. This is our F over here. Hope you can see that. So that's going to be F, R, U, R, I, U, I, 
FI, and the biggest challenge is keeping your perspective. So now I know, just by the faith in the algorithm, these are all rotated correct. I can even see that this is rotated correct, and this correlates with this nicely as well. Now the next step is putting these in at the proper place in the cross. Here's how I do that with a supercube. First thing I want to do is let's orient the center to where it's supposed to be in conjunction with these centers. The white stripe is here, so let's put this in at the white side. Okay, so now this is oriented. So now how do we put this in? And this is where we stray a little bit from a regular Rubik's Cube. Because with a Rubik's Cube, um, you didn't care about the center. The center can move anywhere, but this, it's fixed. These have to move in coordination with each other. But what you want to do is, in order to do the algorithm that, uh, that you'll do with this to, to permute this pretty well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the algorithm that rotates these around and I'm just going to keep rotating it around until one of these are where they're supposed to be. So I'm just going to pick a random place, random side, and what this algorithm will do is it'll keep this here and rotate these guys around. Now normally with this cube I would rotate this until this is in somewhere, but I can't do that with a super cube. The center has to be exactly where it is. So this will stay the same. These guys will rotate and we'll see which one rotates with the proper orientation with the center. R, U, R, I, U, R, 2, U, R, I. And I can see this one. This one wins the day. So all I have to do is turn it where this is fixed and now rotate these around. R, U, R, I, U, R, 2, U, R, I. So as eventually you're going to get it to where they're all permuted correct. So let's turn this to the last layer over here. So the first step is take this center and put it in in the proper orientation. So I'm going to rotate this around so that it's by the white of these guys, by the gray, and by the blue. So I'm going to do the same thing. Now in this particular case, you can see that this edge is where it needs to be. These edges need to be rotated. So with this being the up, this being F, and this being R, it's exactly the same algorithm. R, U, R, I, U, R, to U, R, I. And one more because it's not quite in yet. R, U, R, I, U, R, to U, R, I, and there it is. In, 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 in. So we have our cross at the top. So the next part is corners. Now, there's no difference at this point. This, this being a supercube has no significance at this point. It's done exactly the same way. Um, I'm assuming knowledge of that, but basically in this particular configuration, all the corners are where they need to be. Just these guys are rotated. But this is the point at which we leave the whole supercube issue and you just solve it like a normal Rubik's Cube, a normal 3x3. Three three. And as you know, if this were permuted wrong, then you do the algorithm that turns these around. So real quick, if you look here, you see, okay, this one is in, these guys aren't. And so that algorithm is you hold the one that's in to the right, and then do U, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. Keeps that in, and these guys will keep permuting around until you get it right. And I just got it back there. So let's translate to this. So let's say you have this situation where it didn't turn out quite so, quite so easy. Um, so here's our top layer here. This one is in, none of these are. So this is held to the right. This is our F move over here. This is our R move over here. So same kind of thing now. Bear in mind this center is our F. This is gonna be our R, this is gonna be our L. This is our bottom over, over here. So. U, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. All right, not yet, so do it again. There's a learning curve. Oops. And once you do that learning curve, it actually gets easier and you sort of become more of an expert at the particular puzzle, it's at that point that I move on. Okay, so this is more likely the situation that you're gonna get. This is in, this is in, this is in. This is actually in, as you can tell by the shape, it's just oriented wrong. Now, when you take a look at this, you may say, oh, everything is in and it's rotated correctly except this. 
Um, we've never seen this. This is like a parody type situation. Um, it actually isn't. What you need to do next is you need to uh, rotate these corners into configuration. That's like this situation over here where these guys are in right but they have to be rotated. So they, they have to be turned. So that's where you hold it here with this on the right side and just do your RI D I R D R I D I R D till that's in, then rotate this here. This is that last magical algorithm that for some reason seems to work. Don't really know why. Anyway, this is in, and then the final thing is solved. You gotta do the same thing here, but the problem is that you can see, obviously, that this corner is not correct, but you're not supposed to have just one that's out. You're supposed to have others that's out. So this is where this appears to be parity. I will tell you, though, that this is not parity by definition. This is what I call the fallacy of false equivocation, which looks like parity because it looks like it's an impossible situation. The reason why this is not parity is one of these, or, or two of these, or however many, is rotated incorrectly. Even though this looks like it's, it's the same no matter how you rotate it, the puzzle disagrees. If you were to take this from a start in a position and put like a dot on the top of all of these, you would find that, that at this point, one of these dots is over here. So it's not rotated correctly. So when you come across a situation like this, just have faith that you cannot get parity in this kind of a puzzle. This is rotated, and one of these is rotated incorrectly. And it doesn't matter which one. So just like I did with this, I'm going to rotate this correctly so that, um, here's the top layer, so that the blue and yellow is where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to move it down. Again, keep your perspective. So this is going to be that R, D, I'm sorry, R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D. Keep doing it until it's rotated correctly. Okay, so now this is in, but you can see things are screwed up here. So I turn it here, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this around because it doesn't matter which direction this is facing. All that matters is that this puzzle does not agree with this particular configuration. I falsely equivocated it because I had no way of knowing what the proper one is, proper orientation is, because it looks the same at all angles. And because of that, because I had no way of knowing it, that is very much like a parody but it's really just a falsely equivocating one orientation for another. So I'm just gonna spin this around with the same algorithm. Assume that it's in wrong and watch what happens. Watch the sparks fly, put it here, and as you can see, the puzzle now likes it. So when you're in that situation, Basically, that's what you need to do, and that's how you solve this. The tutorial on how to solve the blade cube, um, a little bit extra meaning of, of what it means to have a mod and a super cube. So I'll be referring to this tutorial if there's any confusions on that in the future. So, thanks for watching.